During this case, we'll be discussing a fabrication of a three unit bridge using a digital protocol called the Polo Scam Bodies. The multi unit polos are sold in two different pieces. So they have the multi unit polo itself, which comes in 8 and 11 millimeters high. Then they have the links, which come in 10, 15, and 20. And the length of the links is uh, determined by the space that the implants are apart from each other. On this type of bridge, I'm typically placing two implants to do a three unit bridge with one pontic. And what I like to do is to have the platform protected by putting on what's called a multi unit abutment. And typically this is 1.5 millimeters high. Now ideally the implant platform depth is going to be 4 millimeters below the tissue level, which gives us the space for the multi-unit. You can see here on the x-ray we can see that this is actually the way it is. So when we put the multi-unit on itself, we get this soft tissue that's vertical soft tissue that helps to protect it. Novo BioCare has just come out with a new profile on the multi-unit and I would prefer this. So this is uh, something that's going to enhance the vertical soft tissues allowing us to come into this area and protect the soft tissue over the platform shift. So you can see the profile is very different so it's to promote vertical soft tissue and what we want to do is to place this implant abutment usually at time of surgery but sometimes we wait as well. What you'll notice is that the platform itself is the same width and height, so you can take out the old and put in the new very easy. Now in this case, we did some bone grafting and also uh, put a healing abutment on because we wanted to demonstrate how the multi-unit abutment actually works. So we're going to put the multi-unit abutment on now. The new multi-unit abutments weren't available in Canada, so we did use the Zeal multi-unit abutments for this case. What we did next was to place the multi-unit abutments on the implants and tighten these down to 15 newtons. Now you can tighten them a little bit more where it's a solid piece, but here we did 15 to a manufacturer's recommendation. We did take an x-ray to show that we have about 4 millimeters from the zenith of the soft tissue to the platform and we want the platform shift to be protected with this vertical soft tissue and this is what's going to make the bridge long term successful. So the digital goal is to have a digital workflow for bridges on the multi units and to have this so that we can get a full arch scan. So I'm going to do a three tooth bridge and this will just demonstrate some of these techniques that we're using and I'm in the middle of uh, doing some full arch scans and testing them and verifying them and going back both analog and digital. So let's have a look at the scans required to do this uh, three unit bridge. We have to do a series of scans. So we have to do an upper, a lower, two byte scans left and right, and then also a polo scan to show where the multi unit abutments actually are to fabricate the bridge. You can see we're actually picking up the multi-unit position, which I don't think it matters as much as uh, having where the polos are because it's going to be based on where the polos are. And they're basically lateral scan bodies. So when we do this, we get this really nice scan and we have to pick up the two adjacent teeth and then we'll place the polo scan bodies. Now in this scan, we're going to be using two polos that are eight millimeters high and the links are going to be 10 millimeters long. And this will enable us to do it. Now you could just use one and then one polo body, but we chose to do two in this case. Now you'll take the OmniGrip mini screw and put this in place, and it's slightly threaded through this. This allows you to hold this system together and carry it to the mouth. And we use a torque control wrench to place this uh, assembly in the mouth so the polo gets positioned. And I like to do the posterior first. It's a little bit of uh, get the worst one done and then move forward. And so this way we use the torque control. You're going to have to hold them the polo down, get into position, line it up, and do the final tightening. So I tightened them to 10 on this case. So it's uh, slightly below the 15 that's normal on screws. You can see here, I'll tighten the anterior one, but we don't want these to become loose during the scanning procedure. 
and this would uh, throw off the data. So they have to be secure enough to be not moving around. So once we get this into position, we'll just uh, make sure that they're tight enough. And you can go to 15 if you really want to. It's not going to damage the screw. Now once we have them tightened down, we just check them and I took a photo of it. You can see a little bit of space between them because we do want to orient this from the digital program to know exactly where the two replicas are going to be on the model. So this is a 3D imaging type of thing. So we'll go into the scan and show where we want the locators to be positioned when we do the scan and we'll go back over these with the uh, camera and make sure we're scanning these to get them in the exact position. We don't want to go uh, too much because we don't want to do layering and layering actually causes uh, some inaccuracies. It's like painting a room. When you put a layer of paint on it makes a thickness and so we have to just do a very minimal thickness and then send that off to be uh, manufactured. The lab will use software to pick these up and position the multi-unit replicas in the right order. So it's a very simple procedure. These polos worked uh, quite well. So we're going to fabricate a bridge now, get that inserted. So we'll take off these uh, polos and then we can sterilize them, use them again, try not to scratch them, and uh, we'll send them off to sterilization. Once we do that, we're going to put them back on the healing caps, the white healing caps, and make sure that these are secured down so we don't get tissue growing in over top of the implant system. And um, so then we're going to send the patient off and bring them back to put in their bridge. We'll have the model fabricated and printed and fabricated a beautiful bridge. You can see how this sits down on top. Now I was so excited when this came back from the lab. It had this zirconia ring, which is from uh, angled screw channels. So it means that we don't have to have cement in the abutment to zirconia area. Because I just don't like that. I don't think it makes any sense to me to have a small abutment cemented in. And so here we have the multi-unit and then the bridge sits directly on top of this. And this is held together by a screw. Our goal now is to insert the bridge, so we're going to take off the healing caps, so the white caps on the multi-units to expose the multi-units. And by doing so, we can get in there in the posterior with the torque control wrench, which is one of my favorite wrenches for doing bridge work. And so when I get in, I'll use the torque control wrench and turn the end of this. So it's, it's a manual torque wrench because you're turning this by yourself. And then you unscrew the healing cap. So this exposes the bridge multi-unit abutments and then we can start to insert the bridge. Now I know many of my referral doctors say, oh you do it, you do it, I don't want to do it. This is one of the easiest things you can do. So you're going to take an OmniGrip Mini uh, screwdriver and put it in your torque control wrench. And this allows you to take the screw and hold the screw on the wrench, so on the driver. So it actually has this um, almost like a stickiness to it. So when you put it on, you can carry it to the mouth and not worry about dropping that in the patient's mouth. You should visualize the area and realize that now we have multi-units sitting on implants with a platform shift that's four millimeters underneath the tissue. And this is going to allow us to put the bridge in and to have that biologic seal. You're actually seeing that here in the red that's uh, kind of bleeding a little bit. So the screw is very easy to put in. We can carry this to the patient's mouth and get this tightened down in a very quick and easy way. So looking at the bottom again, we can see that the integral surface has these rings and these rings are the important part because you can have angled screw channels on these screws. So if the implant's off a little tiny bit, you can correct it. When you go in with the screw, try to hold the bridge down. So take one hand, hold the bridge down, and then put the screwdriver in and tighten the screw in. This is going to be the easiest way for you to do this. So that because the screw is small, you want to get this in. And the OmniGrip mini screw, once you do this, it'll start to lock the bridge into position. We're going to tighten the OmniGrip mini screws to 20 Newton centimeters, according to manufacturer's recommendations and then we're able to start the process of checking occlusion and getting things finished for the patient. 
So as the torque wrench is finished, it's going to click and tell you that you're at 20 because I've preset this to 20 prior to putting it in the patient's mouth. Very important step. So we'll check the occlusion, come in with some articulating paper, and we'll make sure that the we'll do the, the steps that make this a ideal position for the final bridge. So looking at this, we have angulated screw channels. This is amazing for a three unit bridge. On the system, you also have a zirconia ring, which means you don't have a tie base on this. So you don't have a small tie base that's cemented. It sits right on the multi-unit. So you don't have another stackable part to the whole system because it's sometimes very thin and uh, will show through the tissues. And so we wanna try to protect against that. We're gonna take some uh, Teflon that's been sterilized and we'll place it in the channels so that we can protect the screw before the resin goes in. And we'll take one and put it in the front and then we'll take one and put it in the back and then we can start to put the resins in. So it's very simple and easy and uh, the patient really doesn't mind this procedure. It's been something that they don't have a lot of uh, pressure on the soft tissue. They don't have a lot of issues. The bite comes back usually perfect because you're doing it on articulators that make it so that it can be perfected. We're gonna take some resin. So this is bulk fill resin, and we'll put this in the, the chambers so that we can fill it up with a resin that's gonna be a little bit more durable for the occlusion. Because these do take a little bit more beating, I think, because of the lack of a periodontal ligament. And we have uh, something else like an implant against it. It's gonna take a lot of beating. If we have a, a tooth against it or a denture, then it's gonna be a lot easier. I like to use a deep curing light to secure that and you can see that once we have the resin in place we'll take the deep curing light and do it a few times to make sure that the resin is fully cured and then we can come back and uh, start to finish the resin so I'll use a finishing burr often with the, the resin and then I'll come back and I'll convert to a red striped diamond um, we'll use some articulating paper that has two sides so we can look at the centric occlusion make sure it's good before we do lateral occlusion so the centric occlusion are your centric stops and you want to make sure that you do some coronoplasty to have that hit when the bite is heavy you want the implant to hit light so you want all the teeth in the area to be pushed up their little pistons and then the implant should hit lightly at that point then when you go to lateral, you want to remove lateral interferences. We don't want to have that on an implant system, and especially in the molar region. If it's in the molar region, it will actually enhance the forces on the posterior. And so we go from, say, 250 pounds of pressure to 1,000 pounds of pressure. We don't want to have this, and it can cause some TMJ issues for the patient. So check out the fit of this digital polo scam body bridge and it's just incredible and I was so excited to work with it. We're working on some full arch stuff now and testing it with verification jigs so check back and uh, I'm excited to show and share with you. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a YouTube presentation about polo scam bodies.